Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our church service today. We're happy to be with you. You know, we all long to be together, and I believe that day is coming very, very shortly. But I am really thrilled to know that you're participating in our worship today. Whether it's on Sunday or you're catching up later in the week, welcome. What a great joy it is to know that we can share time together around the presence of Jesus. So why don't we just take a moment, and let's all open up in prayer, and come together in faith and believe God that all of us together will receive what God has for us today. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that we have this opportunity to gather together as a family and as believers to worship you and to bring you honor. Father, we ask you to bless our time together so that we are able to carry you outside of these walls through social media and through just friendships. That God, we can bring you the comfort, the love of the world to our surroundings, and we thank you for your presence in Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, we do love you, and we just always want you to know you're not alone, but we want to just again thank you for being a part of our family. Now, we're going to break away just for a moment, enjoy the worship, we'll come back and receive our offering, and then get into the Word, so we'll see you in just a moment. So glad to be worshiping with y'all this morning. I encourage y'all to get off the couch, get out of bed, out of your comfort zone, stand up and worship the Lord. Give him all that you have because he's worthy of all our praise. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like.
Hey guys, welcome back. It's offering time and we're honored to have this opportunity with you. I really want to take a moment to thank all of you for your extreme generosity. You know, you guys have been so faithful. Listen, if you're watching for the very first time or just experiencing TFC, offering time is a very spiritual time because we, we know that from the scriptures, Jesus was watching men and women bringing offerings to the temple and they came up to this one moment where this widow woman came with just two little bitty mites. She, in other words, the word of God says she gave all that she had unto the Lord. And Jesus recognized her and said, you see that woman right there? She's given the greatest sum of all, even though it's the least, it's the greatest sum of all because she's given out of her need. And you know, you guys have done that in this, in this season that we're in. You're giving out of your need to support the work of the kingdom. We're so honored. Listen, we have some friends of ours who are really not a part of the ministry, but they know that we're working hard to stay in touch with you, and they're supporting the ministry. So any kind of way that you can get involved, if God moves on your heart, know this. When you sow into the kingdom, you're preparing your tomorrow. So follow all the prompts. Go online. You're going to be able to follow how to give. Give and get everything in order. And if you're going to mail a check, do that as well. Go to Thibodeau Family Church and you mail it to P.O. Box 350, Thibodeau, Louisiana, 70302. Follow the prompts, and we look forward to having your offering come in where we can utilize it for the spreading of the kingdom of God throughout the whole world. So we'll see you in a moment. Shadows step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. Dance like the rain has been lifted, graces waiting. The Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let Hey guys, if you aren't connected with us yet, you can connect with us by following Thibodeau Family Church on Facebook or Instagram. Our church services are at 10 a.m. and they're live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Our Wednesday nights called The Refilling at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights is um, aired on YouTube and Facebook as well. And if you aren't a part of our text message group with Pastor Duane, you can text TFC to 84576 to get daily messages of encouragement from Pastor Duane, which he calls it the God pills because it's medicine from the word to heal our soul. So thanks guys. I hope you enjoy the message. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, you know what it is? It's word time. It's time to get into the word of God. So let's take a moment and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that you'll give us eyes to see, ears to hear, 
a heart to understand and the will to obey the word of God. And we thank you for this time, this blessed moment in Jesus name. Amen. Now this week, I want to talk to you about, I, I got this, this message that's kind of brewing up on the inside of my heart. And I want to talk to you today about hearts that beat together as one. Now I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey because of some things that God has like shared with me, revealed to me as I've studied for uh, a lot of this work that we, we're doing right now. And over the Easter season, I came across this one scripture where we, we talked about it last week in a brief moment, but I want to, again, add to the journey, where in John chapter 20, verse 17, Jesus tells Mary, he says, I want you to take this message to my disciples, and I want you to tell them that I ascend to my father and to your father. I want you to tell your brethren, I want you to tell them that I'm going to my father and their father. I want you to go tell them that I'm going to my God and their God. And, you know, that did something for me because I wanted to know at that moment, like, what was Jesus talking about? Because I think it's phenomenal that Jesus makes available to us the one that he relied on while he lived in this earth, both the one who gave him the authority and the power to bring in the kingdom of God and also the one who loved him and cherished him and looked after him while he was in the earth. So I said, let me just do a quick study of the word God and father that Jesus brought up in the word. So the first reference that we came up with was in Matthew chapter four, verse four, where the word of God says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Jesus now takes the, the term God and he says, you are to live by the words that come out of this authoritative position called God. This, this, this one being, God himself, who speaks into uh, existence, life himself, you live by his word. Then he goes on to tell us different things. He says that the Father comes in power. He says that you error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. So now we see God being connected to power. We see the fact that living is connected to God. Then we find in Matthew chapter 22 that he says, Have you not read the things that were spoken unto you by God? So now he goes back to the scriptures again saying, You should be reading the word that God has given you that gives you life and who provides you with power. Then he told us these thoughts. He says, Serve God. And then he tells us, because God clothed the fields with grass. But then he also says, well, how much more will he take care of you? Then he tells you to seek first the kingdom of God. Remember, God is referred to the one who we live off of, we live by, the one who supplies us with power, the one that we're to seek, the one who clothes the earth with beautiful grass. And then he tells us we're to seek the kingdom of God. Then he tells us that he cast out devils by the Spirit of God. So you can see that God is a picture of life and authority wrapped up. And so we then turn to the thought process, well, what does Jesus say about the Father? And he says, well, the Father is glorified by your good works. So now we begin to see this intimate display of us displaying God to those around us. Father is displayed in that. Then he tells us to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So now we have this, this illustration, this picture now that's put before us that we serve a perfect father and we are now called to be like him. Well, how is that possible? Well, I have to draw nigh unto him. He tells us that the father knows what things you have need of. So there's the care of the father. He says, father forgives, so you have to forgive. All of this is said because of this simple point that I want to make is that father who took care of Jesus, God, who demonstrated his power through Jesus, is both now our God and our Father, and we need to celebrate that. So on Wednesday night, then, we, I really felt like we were going to take a journey, and we did. We began taking a journey of developing a strong spirit. So if you miss Wednesday night service, go back online and get caught up on that. And one of the cool things about a strong spirit is that the strong spirit makes a way for God to move in your life and in the life of others. So strong spirit is super, super important, having a strong spirit. So instead of teaching all that, go back and get that. 
So in order to have a strong spirit, though, you have to live in a life of what is called repentance. And a life of repentance is not just identifying like all of my sin, but it's really putting me in a position where I identify my shortcomings so that he can be Lord of my life over every area of my life. So I found this statement in my studies where it says that repentance is you giving God the right to direct your life. So that means I'm willing to look at life God's way. I'm willing to change my perspective on life because I needed to see it from God's way. So when you look at all this, now you get a picture of God and Father, God the Father, the one who now portrays authority, gives you authority, gives you power, but the one who cares for you, loves you. And now you're willing to by developing a strong spirit to mature, to become that believer that is needed in the earth. But that's going to come through a life of repentance. I'm always changing my perspective towards the kingdom of God. So then that brings us up to today. My heart beating one with Father's heart. You can find this scriptural text in Matthew chapter 17. You can read verses 17 through 21. It's a beautiful text of Jesus coming off the Mount of Transfiguration. He comes into a time now where he's coming off of that mountain, and he's now approached by a father who has a son. This son represents mankind, and he has now been affected by a demon. Well, the, the only begotten son of God is Jesus. And Jesus comes off of this mountain, and now he's approached by a father who has a son who's been affected by a corrupt system. And his disciples couldn't fix it. So he turns to Jesus and he says, I need you to help me. Now, what stirred this particular message in my heart was the fact that recently we lost one of our beloved members of our, of our church family to the coronavirus. And we, we called the church together to pray and to to believe God for supernatural things in, in this individual's life. And the glory of God is that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, but that we will believe in God for a miracle. And in that regard of her living, it didn't happen. And I don't know about you, but I'm a pastor. I'm a pop of a family. It, it really moved my heart, and it brought me to this particular text where the disciples asked Jesus off to the side, why couldn't we cast this demon out. And Jesus basically tells him, he says, this type of infliction, this demon that was affecting this young boy has to be removed only by prayer and fasting. Or in other words, you have to live a life that is separated unto God in order to be able to move these forces of power. Now remember, what we've been talking about is that Jesus has given us access to Father and to God that he lived by, he lived underneath his dominion. That God, that Father is now our God and our Father. We have the authority. But I think that in a lot of cases, we find ourselves much like the disciples in this particular text of Matthew chapter 17, where they, they're doing their best because in the past they have. They've cast out demons. They've, they've done the works of God. But in this case, nothing happened. And what I find remarkable was that Jesus... You know, he, he tells his disciples, he asks them some stuff, but he tells them, he says, the reason you couldn't do it is because of your lack of faith. And he asks this, this question, he says, how much longer do I have to put up with your doubts? And that's tough. But it ought to be something that good, tough loves brings us into a level of repentance, brings us into a level of maturity, brings us into a level where we're working for a strong spirit that we understand that we have the same father that delivered this young boy from a, de a devil that was operating through Jesus, this father who loved this son from heaven into earth, this same father in God that was operating through Jesus is our father and our God. And Jesus said to this particular situation, it was just a lack of faith. But you need to know something. Faith has the power to remove mountains. And there's nothing in this life that you can't do with that power. But in this particular case, he says it has to be done through a sanctified life. It has to be done through a life whose heart beats one with the Father, where you desire to be like Jesus, to be in communion with the Father. Jesus says if you're going to change the dynamics, the dynamics of of, of uh, the culture, because the culture at that time and still even today, the Bible says it's faithless 
and it's perverse. Now, the word perverse there just means it's twisted. It just means that it's distorted in its approach to life. So the whole generation that we live in from Jesus' time into now, because we're still affected by the same forces of darkness, we're still dealing with similar situations, that our generation is faithless and is perverse. It's twisted in its thinking, and the disciples were affected by that. They really were. So they were faithless, and they were twisted in their thinking. So he says, listen, what you need to know is that the generation as a whole is unable to think straight. They're not able to, to feel the way they're supposed to feel for humanity or even act in faith because of this demonic force. And so what Jesus, I believe, is revealing to us is that there is an opportunity for the church to rise up in power, but we have to be a people that are going to begin to operate in a sanctified life where we, we reorder our lives, that Jesus becomes the preeminence of our life. Not ball games, not different things in life, not television, that we really are hungry for the kingdom of God because... You know, if you look at this story, Jesus didn't have to go and pray and fast. He had already prayed and he had already fasted. In other words, he had already prepared himself for tomorrow. And when tomorrow came, he wasn't caught off guard. My thought process in this, in this message was simply like this. We're coming out of a winter season and we're moving into a springtime. Most people are getting their tillers prepared, their yards are being prepared, they're servicing their engines, their outboard motors, all these different things, and they're servicing them into uh, operating uh, measures where they can go out and take care of business. Well, the kingdom of God, in a lot of cases like that, we run into difficult situations and we say, church, let's pray. Well, it's almost like, well, I need an all change first, and I've got to get my, my filter set, you know, reset. I've got to do a lot of things, and then I'll be really ready to press in. Well, the truth of the matter is we should have been prepared yesterday for today. And all I'm trying to encourage you with is the development of a strong spirit. And we do that by learning from our past experiences of our shortcomings. This is not a message to discourage anybody, but to propel you into greatness. To say, listen, a part of developing a strong spirit is staying united to the Father that Jesus has made available to us drawing our resources from the God that he drew his resources from, developing an intimate relationship with him where my heart beats one with him. Therefore, no matter what comes at me today, I'm prepared because of who I've been connected to this morning, last night, the day before. I've been in a, a lifestyle of sanctification or prayer and fasting. And when we do that, we're prepared to face anything. Now, we know this, that the Word of God says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, that if we're to preach the Word, we're supposed to be instant in season and out of season. Or in other words, we're ready to proclaim that Word, and I believe just not the proclamation of it, but the demonstration of it, or we're to, we should be ready to rise to any occasion. We have that ability to do that. So we put the Word of God on display, whether it's convenient or it's not convenient. And I'll give you a prime example. In Jesus' early ministry, in Luke chapter 4, verse 38 through 39, Jesus went into Simon's house and he found his mother-in-law there. She had a high fever. Jesus went to her, stood over her, rebuked the fever, and the fever left immediately. How did that happen? Because of an intimate relationship with the Father. Now, the Bible just teaches this, that a life of separation is a life of preparation. So if you live a life of separation, you'll always be prepared for the events that are yet to come. And so here's where we're going to close at in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. You can read this, but it does say this. And it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering for both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all one. So in other words, we've been made one with Jesus. We are brethren in the family of God. That's why he says, I'm going to your God and my God, your father and my father. So he says, for this cause, he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. 
So you, you just, you know, continue to read on on your own time pace, but you're going to find that we've been connected to a family and we are truly sons and daughters of God and we should have great results in our life. So I want to encourage you to do something. Be proactive with the kingdom. Be instant, now, ready to go. Be ready for the occasion. How do you do that, Pastor? Spend time with Jesus. Read the word. Man shall not live by bread alone. You live by the very word that God speaks. And the more we hang out with him, the more our heart will beat as one. Amen. I hope that this message has encouraged you. I want to encourage all of you today to be prophets of God, be evangelists of God, be carriers of the word of God, share it, get it out into the universe. Let's see how far we can take this gospel out of Thibodeau into the world. So get active in your like proclaiming the gospel instant in season and out. And let's be ready for anything that comes our way because of our relationship with Jesus that we started yesterday, the day before and so on. So guys, we love you. Let's take a moment and pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that you've called us to be a people whose heart beat as one. We ask you, Father God, to unite us, to hold us together, pull us together, and we want to thank you that you have made available Jesus to us, our Father and our God. And in doing so, we get his love, his care, his compassion, but yet his authority and his oversight. We're so honored that now we get to represent him and his kingdom throughout this whole earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, I, we really do love you. Thank you so much for being a part of today's service. We want to remind you that you can follow us online, be a part of our services, share them. We really need you to get the word out, and we do want to once again remind you you're not alone. We're going to get through this quickly, and we're soon going to gather back together to worship Jesus together. We love you guys. We'll see you next week, or actually, we'll see you Wednesday night. So come on in and join us. We love you, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.